where they are occupied. It's what they need to do in the interim. You guys ever have to do that? You know God has you between places. And in the interim, you are occupied. And they're doing what they knew best to do. They were fishermen. And they needed to make an income. They needed to provide. And, and so the Bible says that they went forth and entered into the ship immediately. And that night they caught nothing. Now, they're not really in ministry, uh, so to speak, right now. Uh, they, are, they are in the interim. It is also a type of doing something on our own and in the, in the flesh. The arm of the flesh will fail us when we're doing it on our own. But they are there. They're doing what they knew to do. And so they fished all night. They were fishermen. They knew night was the time to fish. They knew the place to go. But they weren't foreigners to this. They, 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 they were knowledgeable. And the morning was come, and they, they fished all night and without success. And the Bible says that Jesus stood on the shore. Uh, but his disciples, at least at this time, they didn't know it, that, that it was him. And uh, so the Bible says that Jesus said unto them, Children, have you any meat? The question was to draw them out. Um, and uh, to, 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 to get their attention because they're trying to make a living for their family. And they answered him, no, all night long and no success. That's no fun. They spent their resources. They spent their time. They spent their knowledge of good fishing places and good fishing habits and no success. <coughs> the Bible says, Therefore, the disciple whom Jesus loved said unto Peter, It's the Lord! He recognized that it was God in, in, in this moment. The Bible says that Peter, being naked, and it doesn't mean that he was completely disrobed. It just simply meant that he was down to the, the, the undergarment, so to speak. And so he threw a coat around himself and he cast himself into the sea. I totally skipped the verse. Let me go back. The Bible says that Jesus spoke up to him and he said, cast him down on the right side. Now, they didn't recognize it was Jesus yet. And they fished. They're knowledgeable. Now, would you take advice from someone on the shore? Probably wouldn't feel like it, right? Like, I know what I'm doing. Like, but they did it. And the Bible says that they found fish that they weren't able to draw up their net of fishes. All of life's problems, all of life's cares, God has an answer for them. While we're occupying, while we're working, while we seem like we're doing the best we can, but we're not able to come up with what we like, God's concerned about what cares for I think that's where our application from the Word of God hits every one of us tonight. From the smallest, because you know what? Hannah, you have cares in your life. There's things that you care about as a child. There are. And there's things that, you know, Sister Stacy, you care about. Brother Eli, there's things that you care about. And so the message tonight is Christ cares about the cares of our life. And he's going to see that our needs are met. So they recognize it's Jesus. Peter ropes himself and takes off. The Bible says... They cast himself into the sea. And the other disciple, John, he gets like in a little raft boat. Raft boat and uh, they were far from land. You know, they were about 100, uh, uh, 100 yards away. And uh, they make their way to Jesus and they're dragging these fish. And as soon as they come to land, they saw that there was a fire and there were coals in the fire. And fish laid there on the bread. I love this. I don't think Jesus got them from the catch. That they, they got them, Justin. He already had them. They hadn't brought the fish in yet. God already had miraculous provision for them on top of what he provided. I believe that God has miraculous provisions for us. How many like to have breakfast with Jesus? Amen. That's what they're doing. They're having breakfast with Jesus. Wouldn't you be excited and running? Coals on the fire, and there's, there's fish. The Bible says as soon as they come from land, they saw the coals and the fish and the bread. Man, Jesus has made provisions. Wow. How would you like to have Jesus cook for you? One day we'll get to taste it. But I believe 
that he provides provisions all day long for us. From the time that the morning breaks, he provides for us. The Bible says that Jesus said, I'm going to bring the fish uh, with you that you have caught. And Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fish. Now, Brother Doug, you know how that they stock those little trout that some of them are barely at limit? Sister Rachel, the Word of God says that they brought the fish out. And Sister Stacy, it wasn't just little dinky dinky fish. But you know the Word of God says it was great fish. Man, these are the best fish of the sea. They had the tuna of the sea. Yeah. I mean, they had the best. God had not only provided for them full nets, but like great fish, they're great. Amen. Larger than normal. And the Bible says that there was 153. Now, I didn't really do any calculations of numbers. I don't have anything outstanding to tell you on the numbers. Maybe someone can bring that to my attention. But what I do know is that it was a type that God had commissioned them to go and be fishers of men. And the value of this is, is Jesus was saying to them, I know the number of every fish that you can catch. I know the number of every individual. And every individual is important to me. I have the number. We're valuable to Christ. The Bible says that the net was not broken. It's amazing. It shouldn't have broken the net. But once again, it was a type of saying, listen, when the Spirit of God rules people in and we catch them, the Holy Ghost can keep them. God can keep people. He is able to present us faultless. Now, I'm not preaching eternal security like some may preach, but I am preaching eternal security. We are eternally secure. As long as we stay in the presence of God Almighty, we are secure. The net keeps us. It isn't going to break. Jesus said unto him, Come and dine. And none of the disciples did ask, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus comes and he takes the bread and gives them the fish. The bread was symbolic of himself. The meat is symbolic of the Word of God, which each one of us need. And the Bible says that this was the third time that Jesus showed himself to the disciple, disciples after he was risen from the dead. And I'm going to stop right there. Does anyone have anything that they want to say? I love this. I, I really do. I, and I hope that something is touching and open here. Any thoughts?
Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Brother Justin. Cover next week about Peter and verse 15. Yeah, I had stopped at verse number 14. So yeah, we'll talk more about that. But if you have something to say about that. Well, this is just one of the most interesting, interesting passages, I think. Um, at least when he's talking about it, meeting with the disciples afterwards, because the same, when he's talking about there with the fire, when he's talking to Peter about being my sheep. There's a Greek word that's used to describe the fire, and it's only mentioned one other time in Scripture, and that's when Peter denied Christ with a little damsel. Oh, wow. When Christ was asking about feeding my sheep, he asked him three times, will you feed my sheep? And it's almost as if he's bringing back to Peter's remembrance. Remember that time you denied me? Are you sure you're going to feed my sheep this time? And it, he just mentioned this three times, and like I said, I just always found it interesting because you see a reflection with uh, almost like reminiscing with Peter and Jesus, how Jesus almost is bringing back to his remembrance that time when he denied him with the damsel, and he's just reiterating that in his mind. Are you really going to do it this time, or are you going to deny me? Last time you said you were not going to deny me, no matter what. And a little girl, when you were around the fire, you denied me. Are you sure you're not going to deny me this time? And I just always find that interesting about this time. Well, I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not done studying to him. No, 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 that's good, that's good. I will, I will see if I can find the information on that. I mean, it's very that's good. I'm sure, but I always did like that for that aspect of the class. Well, that's very good. Very interesting. I'll see if I can, yeah, reference that. Very good, thank you. No, 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 not at all. No. no I, I think all that, I think all that, we'll stuff it in so we can find out too. It's good. Thoughts? <laughs> I'm sure if there was needful provision, the Lord would help each one of us out fishing, right? But most of the time, it's recreation. Someone else. Amen. If not, let's stand tonight. We'll keep working our way through. So much to be said in the Gospel of John. Amen. Sometimes answers that we'll never know. We'll know all about the good of us and why it was called that when we get to heaven. We may not completely know it out here. But 
Those won't even be important things coming out of the throne of grace for that. But when we see Jesus, praise God. I don't know about you, but I like fish, but there's some other things I like better. But I'm sure that heavenly food is going to taste good when we sit down. Amen. And uh, he's going to provide the best for us. Brother Eli, we close us in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you.